Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Sunday for those that are joining us live. For those that for those that are joining at any point, thanks so much for being here. Whether you've been here before or this is your first time, whether you're coming back after a while, it's great to have you. We've been talking about this concept called humility, and we left off the end of last week with this idea that no one really can give it to us. We're not really, they can point it out in us, but they don't give it to us. And there's a big distinction there. If you're sitting, if you're, if, if you're, if you're driving a Maserati, no one's going to give you the speed of that car. You got it. You may not know how to drive it. So someone next to you goes, by the way, I don't know if you know, this is a Maserati. You're like, oh, I was thought I was in a, I thought I was in a Honda Odyssey. I had no idea that I'm in a Maserati. You're like, yeah, no, try it. Put your foot on the gas. You're like, nah, really? And then you put your foot on the gas and off you go. But it's not like if they didn't tell you that you wouldn't be able to drive your car. The essence really of this concept of honor to humility, which is what we've been circling around in, is regardless of what somebody says of you or says to you, you still have the same stuff. It's just that we don't know it. So people that were disempowered growing up through people that they respected or looked up to, it's not like those people took something away from you. It's that they didn't give you an awareness of something that you had earlier on in your life. It doesn't mean you don't have it. It means you don't know of it yet. So we, we hold on to that injustice for a very long time. That's why when we went through this a couple of days ago, weeks ago, and how we ended up last week, and we spoke about what it's like to give to somebody else. We, when people are in our lives that are above us, so to speak, they're supposed to be, if you will, empowering us. That's really the job of a parent or a teacher or a coach or a friend, really, at the end of the day, it's not about the information that you get from other people, a rabbi, clergy, whoever. That's only a piece of it. If you think about it, the information that you get from other people on how to live and how to navigate life and how to understand subjects, whether they're physical subjects, material subjects like math, English, whether they're spiritual subjects, really, at the end of the day, the goal is to take a substance like that and to encode within it empowerment. Because if you're delivering empowerment to the subject of your words, they're getting not just this information, they're also getting the emotion, the feeling, and they're unlocking something within themselves to then go out and search for more. So if you're teaching it's not about whether or not someone knows math. It's whether or not when you're teaching math, the math is being digested in an empowering way that will then inspire the person to either figure it out on their own in your classroom or go off and apply what you're doing in their world. If you have a teacher that is a, that disempowers their students, that teaches them math, and they hate it, they may all get A's, but they're never going into math ever again. And you see this, by the way, in school all the time. You ask somebody, how come you became a doctor? If let's assume like, you know, they don't have that in the family and like that whole Jewish thing. But like a lot of times, like, uh, I, you know, it was my, you know, 10th grade bio teacher. What, 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 what does your bio teacher do with you being a doctor? They're like, I don't know. And the answer is because when they were learning bio for the first time, they were inspired by the material because the person teaching the bio encoded within the words inspiration and empowerment and so they felt something about the material that felt differently than when they went to social studies or global or whatever so they just assumed that it was the material it wasn't it was empowerment but they went with it 
And they took more of that same material because it unlocked something within them. So the way it's supposed to work is the people that are influencing others, parents and teachers and, and influencers and rabbis, this happens all the time in the world of theology. You see some rabbi get up and teach students and they're like on fire. And like, what did the rabbi teach you? And, and they're like, I don't know, the same 10 words that the rabbi next to my friends told me, but those guys hate Judaism or whatever religion. How come? It wasn't because they learned the same few lines in whatever book they were learning. It was because it was encoded with the heart of that person. And what that does is it unlocks our true sense. It unlocks our essence. It unlocks us so that we can touch ourselves, the real essence of who we are. And when we don't get that from somebody else, there's an injustice. <laughs> there is an injustice because it's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not how God set up the world. God set up the world in a way in which there's a baton that passes and each person carries a certain fire that it hands to the next person, the listener, the student, the child, and it, they're supposed to empower the next generation. And when they don't, there's an injustice. It's wrong. And so we look back at those that didn't do this for us, and we have a we have a bone to pick. But here's the problem. The bone that we want to pick with other people is actually the negativity now that rests in our eyes and in our minds and our hearts, and it blocks us from tapping into ourselves. Right? This is one of the great mistakes we make all the time in life. We think that forgiveness is for the other person. Forgiveness has very little to do with the other person. You don't forgive other people for them. You forgive other people for yourself. People carry grudges thinking that they're getting back at the other person. Why? Because the other person did an injustice to them. And so the way they think they're getting back at them is by being mad at them. The grudge that somebody holds against somebody else only hurts the person holding the grudge. That other person's living their lives just fine. Right? You ever see this with people? Like the boss says something, and then like the employees all hate the boss. The boss is clueless. He gets to live his life. The employees not only get the subject of whatever they're upset about, they also get to hold on to negativity for the next five years. That's a great way of getting back at the boss. Not only did you hurt me once, I'm going to make sure you hurt me all the time. That's what happens when we suffer an injustice. We think that we're getting back at the person by holding on to that negativity. We're not punishing them. We're punishing ourselves. And then if the person passes away and we hold on to that, holy cow. It's crazy. I'm not saying it's easy. It's just crazy. So what happens, this is where we ended. And this is all connected. So if you stick with me to the end, I, I'll show you this is, with God's help, this is connected. Because when we, we are who we are, we have a, a piece of us that's infinite. That's the honor, if you will. Someone is really supposed to bring it out in us, just to, or to open our eyes to it. So that when we're growing up in whatever the real world we're growing up in, whatever age it is that we are emerging, there needs to, there, there should be a, a revelation of us, of the true essence of who we are in that as well. Sometimes we don't get that. And we feel like we don't get that from somebody else. It's not that they don't, it's not like we, don't, we, we lose. Yeah, we, we didn't realize it earlier, but we still have the same power. So here's what happens. Let's use like the, the teacher example. Because sometimes when I say parents, it gets very personal for people. But it could be a parent. It could be a clergy. It could be somebody else. But let's just use a teacher. But put in your head, whatever the person is in your life, they're not empowering. Sometimes they're disempowering. I mean, some of the emails that I got from people were unbelievable. What parents told their kids. Unbelievable. Like shocking. Disempowering. Okay. Forget not empowering, disempowering. That person could be an adult. And that person may never have even had anybody really open their eyes to their true greatness. So here's what happens. We feel the injustice and we're right. 
to some extent. Now, should we judge our we're heartless. There's a sense of truth. There's an injustice that was committed against us. But what's happening is at the end of the day, the whole goal was to get us to see who we are. And they failed. So you know what we do because they failed? We decide to fail too. We hold on to the failure. And we just increase negativity. And then we get upset. And we keep the cycle going. We hold the grudge. We look back at the person as if this. And as a result, we constantly remind ourselves of the injustice. And all that really does is it puts over our heart this layer of negativity that only prevents us from the very thing that we wanted them to do for us in the first place. And the cycle doesn't end because we're not ending it. The way you end the cycle is by just ending the cycle. You recognize that you're sitting in a Maserati, whether they tell you or not. Whether mom told kid, you got a Maserati inside your soul, or she didn't tell him, or she told him that she, he's driving an old pickup truck. It don't matter. At the end of the day, it's still a Maserati. You still got an infant soul that's more powerful than anything in this world. And the way you break the cycle is when you not only realize it in yourself, but when you realize it in someone else. And when you realize it in the very person who doesn't give it to you. That's what we spoke about at the end of last week. Now, this is all under the banner of humility. You know why? Because where your eyes go is where your attention flows. And when you never really felt like you were worth it in your essence, you have to use counterfeit measures to feel it. Because you don't really feel it in, in the truest sense. That's why people that grow up in worlds where no one ever makes them feel like they're essentially valuable, they have to fake it. They have to use counterfeit ways. They use synthetics. If a person doesn't have the ability to, to use a limb, they use a synthetic. So the, the synthetics that we have, that we use, are when we focus our attention on other people, the impact. That's why you see people that have no real self of, sense of self-worth. They're egoists. They're egotistic because they're not, they don't want to be. They're just empty. Speaking of the true sense of self, I want to dedicate the show to the recovery, the speedy recovery of a man named Yosef Ben Rachel. Interesting, this week's Torah portion is about Joseph, who was the son of, Ra of Rachel. So this, for the person who is out there in need of a recovery, he should get a recovery soon. And in fact, this was actually Joseph's trait. So it's good we're talking about this. The synthetics that we put on our lives come from when we don't feel it as who we are. Now, if you don't feel it as who you are, your mind won't focus on the bee because you don't, you were never told to focus on the bee. You never learned how to focus on the bee, right? Let's go to like that famous example of like the student that comes home with like a 90. Super smart, good student, right? And he comes home for a 90 and his parents like, Where's my 10 points? I don't know if you've ever been that. Where's my 10 points? Thank God I didn't have that growing up. I wasn't getting 90s. So where's my 10 points? <clears throat> so automatically the 90 that he gets, he's disempowered, right? The disempowered 90. So he's got to work his hardest to get to the 100. He doesn't feel an essence in who he is. He doesn't tap into who he is. The infinite source, the ability to be a good student by challenging oneself and studying, there's something inside you that is beyond your mind. And if you push it as hard as you can, you're going to uncover wisdom. He doesn't get any of that. You know what he gets? Where's my 10 points? You know what 10 points is? Competition. That's, remember, stick with me. That's not be. That's not even do. That's have. Where's my 10 points? Where's my 10 points is, did you beat the guy next to you? Did you get more points 
It's not like, did you know the material? It's not like, did you understand it fully? It's not like, did you push yourself to re it's not, it's, did you beat the person next to you? Where's my 10 points? So that person grows up in their lives and there's a synthetic that gets created. And the synthetic is when, 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 when. That's not real. That may then translate to win in terms of money and then win in terms of buying bigger toys or win in, win in terms of getting the best title or win in terms of getting the best graduate degree or win in terms of putting the corner, your office in the corner office. Whatever it is that you're competing for, you're just creating synthetics to beat somebody else because you can't possibly feel the goodness in yourself. So you need something else to make you feel good. So at the end of the day, when you feel empty, you at least look to the trophies and go, hi, I, I, wrote, I won some trophies. But that process was only because you didn't grow up in a world where someone said, that's not what it means to be a great student, 100 points on a test. Who cares about 100 points test? Because some teacher wrote the questions down for real? This is what this, this is what education is. Someone sitting in the front of the room decided these 10 questions. Hey, yeah, your mind. That's not education. Education is when you look at material and push yourself as hard as humanly possible to fully understand it and to explore your mind in the context of that material. Who cares what you get on these dumb tests? You think anybody looks at what you got on your fifth grade test when you're out in the world? Is there anyone in the world that runs a business that's like, well, I did get a hundred in math. It's how hard you push your mind that makes you successful. You have to have it inside. You got to believe that you have a source that can push yourself. You have to believe. That's why when you sit at a bench to, pu to push, to do push-ups or to lift weights, you believe your body has the ability to rip itself and regenerate. Well, you got to believe that with your brain too. When you have that growing up, when someone hands you that B, you're not trying to get 100. You're trying to understand. You're trying to grow. If you don't have that, you go here. Now, and let's put it all together. You may look back at those teachers and parents and feel an injustice and put that negativity on. Well, it's because of them that I, I'm always fighting for more. It's never going to end until you end it. Searching for impact and having as a way to find ourselves is... That's not how we find ourselves. And it's never going to end until we stop the cycle. And the way you stop the cycle, if you didn't get it growing up, or you didn't get it in your life, or you're not getting it now from your loved ones, if you're sitting in a marriage and you're not getting it, if you're sitting in a, if you're working with a boss right now and you're not getting it, you're never going to get it. The way you get it is when you give it. When you look at somebody else and you look for their essence. So I got a great question from a good friend of mine. He said, doesn't that empower them? The answer is it actually disempowers them. I want to say it better. The answer is, doesn't that empower them? The answer is yes, it empowers them. It just empowers them properly. Because the reason why they're, they have negativity towards you is because they probably got negativity from them. They probably got, it got passed down. That boss who's yelling probably got yelled. That parent who, is, who disempowers probably was disempowered by his parents. That clergy, the rabbi who teaches it and yells at his students probably got yelled at from his parent or from his teacher as well. It's a cycle because nobody really wants to disempower somebody else. How could anybody with a soul ever want to disempower? Disempowering is what you learn. It's not what you're born with. And sometimes the only way to break out of that cycle is to go back to the very person who didn't give it to you and use your eyes to see the essence of who they are, that soul, to see past the words that disempowered you, to see past the things you wish you would have gotten, and to start realizing that, okay, you didn't get it, but it didn't change what you still have. And whether you got it or not, you still got a Maserati. And as long as you start putting your foot on that gas and starting to identify with this, once you start taking your eyes off the have and move it towards the be, once we start realizing that, wait a second, who I am is so much greater than anything I will ever have my whole life. There is no title. There is no trophy. There is no office. There is no 
anything. There's no pat on the back. There is no award. I don't care if I win an Emmy and 50 million people watch it. It will not compare to recognizing what I already have inside me. There's nothing that the physical world can give me that will compare to a source that is infinite that I already have. And once I spend a couple of minutes thinking about that, all I want to do is share it. Now I turn around to those and say, we're good. I get it. We're good. We're good. I still got it. And when you start to see it in other people, especially those people didn't see it in you, you know what you may be doing? You may be unlocking their own greatness because no one ever locked it in, in them. That's when you switch the, that's when you switch it. Not only when you unlock it in the next group and the people around you and your friends and your children and your students, not only when you do it then, it's when you look back up to those who you wanted to do it for you and you see it in them. And then all of a sudden what happens is you may be giving them a gift that no one gave them. There are teachers in the front of that classroom that look scary that are also incredibly insecure. There are parents out there that think they have it all figured out. They never get anything from their parents. There's some clergy out there that look super spiritual and holy that still don't really know God. Don't underestimate your power. Don't underestimate your power. You may be the one to empower the people even that should have been empowering you. And that, that is real humility. Humility is the recognition that I have something that is so great that even if I can hold an injustice, even if I can get them back, I don't want to. I don't want to. Because this thing that I have is so much greater than me and all I want to do is share it. Then you start to appreciate it. Okay, we'll continue. So much more to say. So much more to say. All right, we'll talk about it. Have an awesome day. Wherever, whenever you tuned into this, thank you. But especially for those who are with me, Sunday morning, AM, Facebook, Zoom, and WhatsApp, and on, on any platform, Instagram, whatever, whatever platform you're on. But whenever you listen to this, listen to this slowly and think about it. Because this is stuff that um, we got we to gotta let this like penetrate. All right. With God's help, I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.